This podcast may contain forward-looking statements that are subject to risks and uncertainties. These forward-looking statements are based on current expectations and may differ materially from actual future events or results due to a variety of factors. For a discussion of factors that could affect our business, please refer to our filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission. All of our statements are made as of today based on information currently available to us. We can give no assurance these statements will prove to be correct, and we do not intend and undertake no duty to update these statements except as required by law. Welcome to our Journey to Scale podcast for Thursday, February 8th, 2024. In this episode, we bring back Inovic's Chief Operating Officer, Ajay Marathi, for an update on the company's Fab 2 progress. Welcome, Ajay. Thank you, Christian. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to talk to you again. To recap, when we last spoke on December 6th, we covered why you chose Malaysia for the location of Fab 2, the meetings you had with the Prime Minister of Malaysia and other government officials, and then we got into the weeds with an update on the company's manufacturing milestones, and our listeners want to know where we are today. So I'm going I'm to kick it over to you, and you can tell us what does FAB2 in Penang look like today? FAB2 is uh, currently the most exciting place, actually, in the company, which... Uh, Again, it's a hidden uh, hidden gem right now because we haven't really unveiled it to a lot of people. Um, a lot has happened in FAB2. All the facilitization work has finished. The uh, 200, roughly 220,000 square feet of clean room area has been facilitized. Um, all the uh, rooms for different zones are ready. All the air handling systems, plus 10K air showers, changing room, gowning rooms, everything is all set up uh, and equipment has started rolling in. So yeah, a lot of exciting stuff happening in FAB2. For the clean room environment, has that been certified? Yes, uh, we have got all the, so what we have done there is the production area, as we have mentioned to you, is four zones. The first three zones are in a clean room environment, which is controlled, you know, HEPA filter cleaned, to the class uh, 10K. And so the airflow, which is basically recirculated through the rooms, maintains a particle count, uh, which is certified by a third party to what is called a class 10K status. And mm-hmm. we've got external parties uh, actually certifying the the, the clean, cleanliness of those rooms. That's mm-hmm. zone one through three, which are in the clean room. And zone four, which is more of a test and sort and final uh, OQC and ship is in what is called the class 100K area, which is typical of semiconductor assembly and test type of environment, whereas the zone one to three are in a clean room environment where more compensatory airflow comes in and purified it through the HEPA filters and comes into the production floor. So uh, let's get into the details since I think everyone is anxiously awaiting to hear about factory acceptance testing. And I believe you've started site acceptance testing on some of the zones. So let's start with zone one. Can you tell us where we are? Yeah. So the zone one, again, to just completely describe what zone one is, zone one is our laser patterning and dicing equipment, as we have mm-hmm. mentioned to you, uh, consists of uh, uh, all three layers in the inside the battery uh, separator, cathode, and anode, uh, you know, laser cutting, and uh, the tools for one set were already installed uh, in December or planned. Uh, the balance of the five tools, so four tools already installed, but balance of the five tools are also getting now uh, shipped and installed. So zone one is getting near completion of installation. So all FAT is done and installation near complete. It should complete here imminently. And then after installation, you start site acceptance testing. Is that right? Right. So after after installing the equipment, basically get gets powered up, dry cycled, and SAT on the on the first four tools have has already begun. We are well into it. The first three machines uh, have completed to the order of eighty five percent requirements of the SAT checklist. Uh, which is pretty rigorous. Now, just to remind everyone, FAT, which is the factory acceptance test, is an extraordinarily rigorous process by means of which we qualify the tool at the site of the supplier. That's FAT, right? And we don't allow the tools to ship or go to the next phase, which is uh, packing and crating and shipping 
from its respective uh, places uh, wherever the machine is being built all the way to Malaysia that we don't allow until the FAT completion is done. So a lot happens during that FAT process, a lot of qualifications in case there's a problem found uh, where the machine gets kicked back into engineering hands to go mm -hmm. improve. All that stuff happens during FAT because what we need, is the discipline we follow basically is do not allow anything that is not fully accepted at the factory level to get out mm -hmm. of the factory. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, you know, we have been following that very, very rigorously uh, like religion. Um, and then the installation happens, the dry cycling happens, and SAT, which is site acceptance test, also equally rigorous, in fact, even more so, in the presence of the supplier engineers showing up at the site, plus our own engineers who are, who are already there and uh, eagerly waiting for this equipment uh, to show up, uh, jointly started working on SAT. We are well on our way for Zone 1 SAT to be completed. Currently, we are expecting SAT to be finished sometime over the next four weeks on Zone 1. That is excellent progress. Let's uh, shift to Zone 2, and if you could describe what Zone 2 is and then tell us the right. details. So Zone 2 begins where the laser dicing is finished, uh, mm -hmm. and the electrodes are in the form of diced electrodes on rolls, which are fed to the stacking machine, and then all the way through the end of Zone 2, uh, which is basically the AO fill constraint attach and that type of thing. So that's all Zone 2, right? So there are two timelines we are tracking on that one, which is one for HVM, which is the big 1350 UPH line. And mm -hmm. the other one is the agility line, which is also equally important. Zone one, again, was the farm, which is common to both lines. Zone two is where the differentiation happens between the, S, the agility and HVM lines, right? Mm -hmm. So both are tracking FAT on HVM line is completing by the end of February, mm -hmm. which is this month, mm -hmm. and uh, it will ship right after that, whereas the Agility line is slightly ahead of that, as we had planned. Mm -hmm. uh, agility line, we wanted to make sure that that gets into Penang the soonest so that we can start preparing samples for customer shipments given to them in the form of engineering samples of that line to the specs of the customer and mm -hmm. that one is completing imminently even before, like one and a half weeks before the HVM line mm -hmm. and will be in the fab two by middle of March. So anything else you want to tell us about zone two in, in terms of timing? No, I can share with you some exciting stuff uh, which is happening in zone two. Now in gen one, line one, which is where, you know, in Fremont here, we have, uh, even though we have done a lot of work on yield and progress well, which I've shared, you know, in my previous blogs with everyone, we have done kind of uh, learnings and root cause corrective action or failure analysis on where are we losing yield on in the Gen 1 and Zone 2. Zone 2 is a very critical zone. Zone mm -hmm. 1 and Zone 2 are kind of attached together. The quality of laser ablation and cutting gets judged by how well we can stack mm -hmm. in the stacker. And that's why Zone 2 becomes like a report card for Zone 1 as well, right? It's important. Are we able to stack these electrodes when we cut them, you know, in the way of pairs in the, in the right format? And that's what is called yield of the Zone 2. Now, exciting stuff during the FAT work in Zone 2, we have in here in Gen 1, Line 1, we have never experienced the kind of yields that we are now showing in the FAT. FAT, right. um, mm -hmm. you know, the yields are where we want it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't really share with, you know, everyone all the uh, yield numbers, but it's high. And it's where mm -hmm. the, the line needs to be. Uh, it's, in, it's in the high 90s, you know, closer to that three-digit number, if I can say it that way, mm -hmm. a little bit louder. Um, Exciting. Then we, we are in that position for zone two. Again, this is pre-FAT and FAT work. The same tests will be done when the machines are in fab, which is the SAT work, which we are mm -hmm. eagerly waiting for when that will begin. And then I can report out next time what the yields look like in zone two. But good early indicator of yields in FAT, exactly what FAT is supposed to do. Great. So let's let's talk about zone three, the longest line. Let's give us a little color around where we are with zone three. Zone three is actually divided up into two parts. We have shared with you zone 3A and 3B. The 3B, which is the, the degassing line, mm -hmm. uh, is complete. That was completed end of the year uh, per mm -hmm. plan. And the machines are on the boat. 
uh, sailing towards SAP2. So that's good. Now, Zone 3A, in the month of March, in basically still in Q1, we will finish the FAT work. And then Zone 4, that one, that one's way ahead of schedule, right? Zone 4 is ahead of the schedule. We said the, the cabinets were installed, the, the loader-unloader, the conveyance system for Zone 4 is installed. So Zone 4 is pretty much ready. It's way inside the SAT timeline now. Engineers are over there buying off the equipment in the form of site acceptance test in Zone 4. Not an issue uh, with Zone 4 at all. So just to recap, Zone 1, FAT is complete, SAT is in process. Zone 2 will be done this month. Zone 3A by end of Q1, 3B is complete, and SAT is in process. And Zone 4, SAT is in process. Is that right? Correct. That's, okay. that's accurate, and, yes. And then I think what everybody is waiting to hear is, you already mentioned it, but I'll just reiterate that first samples are still on track to be produced off the Agility line in Penang in April. Yes, that is correct. That's great. 70 tools. And yep. the, all of this learning, FAT and SAT, you weren't able to do. I mean, it was before your time on Gen 1. Actually, it started before my time, but it mm -hmm. got accelerated after, you know, when I, I got on board here in November of 2022. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've made a lot of progress, understanding of all the yield. And, and we have been continuously feeding that learning uh, in the form of very properly documented root cause analysis for the yield uh, issues. And like I said, you know, now that work is paying off because in FAT, now we are seeing the indicators already that mm -hmm. what we thought would be fixed in Gen 2 in high volume production is is actually the case. And we're mm -hmm. getting that evidence now rolling in from the from the FAT work. Well, so how are you feeling now that we're inching towards April? Confident, uh, you know, also of the dates. And uh, like I said, eagerly waiting for all machines to show up so that we can begin this work, starting to produce batteries uh, as a finished product and putting them in the hands of the customer. Nothing, no more, more satisfaction for an operations guy than having samples in hand, which you can confidently give to the customer and say, please test these and mm -hmm. give us your feedback. And that's that's uh, that's the feeling we have, actually, all of us. That's great. Well, your expertise surely shines through as you talk through all of these processes. And then additionally, Anovix recently announced that the next earnings call will be on February 20th. So assume we'll be hearing more updates from you then. Yes. So my, the plan again is, uh, is is for me to be actually conducting the live streaming from our FAB2 location, mm -hmm. showing uh, some of the equipment which is already going through SAT running behind me at mm -hmm. the time. And uh, that'll make it real. I'll also have some footage of uh, FAB2, uh, which we can uh, load in the, in the videos, which we can share. Uh, that building is our pride, and it is mm. coming out quite nicely. Actually, you'll you'll see it, you know, in the videos we'll share with everyone. And the team that right now in Penang, you've got about how many people? Uh, about eighty-five people uh, of different disciplines: product engineering, process engineering, uh, sub, some support people as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and it has grown. Uh, completely excited. More than half of that team. Actually, 60, 70 percent of the team was at the supplier site or still is in some mm -hmm. cases buying off the equipment tools. So they hit the ground running when the when the equipment shows up in FAB2. So, yes, uh, very exciting for that team as well. Exciting times. And Indeed. I'm sure we'll be giving more updates as we get closer to the April date. Is there anything else that you want listeners to know? No, uh, yeah, just, you know, feel the excitement that I have uh, going through me uh, and hope I can. I, I've transmitted that enough. But if not, see you on the on the 20th. That concludes this episode of our Journey to Scale podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe for alerts. We'll be releasing new episodes as we reach new milestones and scale up to high volume manufacturing. Until then, thank you and have a great day.